Okay. Howdy folks. You know what they say, if you're gonna have a bench grinder, you may as well have a big one. <laughs> We're gonna look at this today. Vivar, yes, they make a bench grinder. <laughs> Yeah, who else would send us a cool tool? Of course, it's Vivor. Vivor, this is the eight inch bench grinder. So she makes uh, my Ryobi bench grinder look like a toy. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. And it came in a really good box, well packed. So there's, I, I just, like anybody knows we're on bench grinders, I check these wheels very carefully to make sure that there's nothing wrong before we spin her up. And the very first thing I noticed was it had this little thing in the knob in the middle. <laughs> Variable speed. That's a, that's a new one on me. Cool. I haven't quite finished assembly, but uh, the variable speed, interesting. If you're sharpening like a chisel or something, uh, like a wood chisel, uh, the slower speed is going to help you keep the heat away from the blade and help you with uh, sharpening. I'm just, you know, using it as an example. Uh, the high speed, yeah, most of the time, if you're like me, 36, 36, 30, 3800 RPM, and just, you know, let her go. But there are situations with sharpening certain types of metals and things, you're going to want to pull the speed down. And of course, having that variable speed is going to allow you to do that. It's got a nice uh, set of pedestals here, including a groove here for a uh, drill, you know, for sharpening drill bits and stuff. It's it's in there. Pretty, almost, you almost figure that's pretty much standard with most bench grinders anyways, but uh, the eight inches, like I say, it's, uh, it's bigger than what I'm, I'm used to seeing six inch grinders laying around. So this is more like, uh, you know, industrial size, you know, Mansa, uh, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get into the features. And right now I'm working on these to get these mounted, which also come with these little, uh, I think they're plexiglass plates for protection. So we'll get this all mounted up. And then we're gonna plug this bad boy in and uh, we'll sharpen some drill bits or something. Really cool. We're fully assembled and got a question here. There's a very positive little switch up here that turns a LED light on and or off. And of course, by bending this around, you can focus this. Also, you can loosen this off and adjust your plate. But uh, these are really simple, easy, stupid. Uh, here, I'll, I'll just pop this one off and show you. It's two batteries up in here and they're AAA batteries. I, I'm kind of mixed over that. Usually the power supply for the light up here is usually something to do with the grinder or it has a big snake light or whatever. So I just want to ask you guys an opinion on whether you like this kind of situation or if this is something that you know turns you off or whatever about the machine. I'm kind of on the border. Um, I don't like the snake thing laying around. For example, the one I've got on my Ryobi no longer works. So yeah, you know, it's like, it seems like there's a short life and I've seen these lamp uh, lamp kits that get destroyed by the grinding and stones and whatever. So maybe we can get some comments going about that. Meantime, the Ryobi is uh, 2.1 amp draw. So that's how much power you're running. This one is five amps. So you know you've got more than twice as much power coming off of this grinding wheel system. And so that's pretty cool. We are also has a lockout, which my Ryobi doesn't have. You can remove this tab and lock the machine out so that no one can ever uh, start it up without uh, your knowledge sort of thing, like the kitties get in there or whatever. So that's, that's a good feature. And uh, so I think at this point, the other thing we gotta look at is the water dish. The water dish is really small. I'm kind of wondering what happened there. I guess I could 3D print something bigger. I don't need anything bigger than this. And again, uh, comment, you know, water dish. Uh, I've only got a little tiny one here, but I think that's fine. You know, less water to use and whatever it might, maybe that's a good thing. You know, uh, the Ryobi came with a bathtub that, you know, again, I never use it because it takes so much water to fill it. I don't bother where this one here, a little bit of water will fill this up easily and you can dip your tool in there to cool it off while you're, you know, doing your grinding. So yeah, a few questions there and comments about, uh, what do you think? You know? Yeah. Another quick note too, got safety goggles on, I'm behind the grinder and we plugged it in. We're going to start for the first time because, because it was in shipping, um, you know, I don't trust grinding wheels. I have had one explode on me once very, very, very long time ago. So. We'll give her a shot, and she's winding up, and I'm going to sit back here. If something goes wrong, you guys are going to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whew. It took a while to get up to speed, but it's nice, quiet, smooth. Okay, I don't hear any vibration or anything going on. Nice. All right. 
Let's uh, let's crank her up to full speed. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Uh, I've got this bolted down at the back here, by the way, just so you know, this thing is secured to my bench. But, man, that's, shoot, wow, I can't get over that. Sounds like you, you know, back it back down. Not too much vibration, so that's pretty good. I'll tell you what, just for fun, <laughs> I'm going to fire the Ryobi up and shut it off. And actually, I'm going to shut this off. And we're gonna listen to the, uh, you're gonna hear my right Ryobi. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Right. Okay, the Ryobi is running. And now we're gonna shut it off and just check this out. All right, we'll go on, full power all the way to the top. I don't have a lot of drill bits that are dull, so uh, what I'm going to do is just sort of clean this one up a little bit and just see how she does. Mm. Yeah, it's doing a pretty good job. I like it. Yeah. Definitely got a nice edge. The angle's a little bit aggressive looking to me. Yeah. Okay, I didn't do that right, but yeah, the secret. Yeah, They're looking good. Okay. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is when you do a drill bit like this, especially a big one like this, it's really easy to sharpen them because you get a nice edge on this front. But as you come off of here and you rotate the bit a little bit to get around this corner, you also want to kind of ride it up a little bit like this, just very slowly and casually. The machinist uh, showed me this uh, years and years ago and that gets a little bit of a slope on the back side here so as the drill bit's going in it'll help it sort of dig in a little bit yeah yeah I'm sure there's there's a lot of other tricks you can do like grinding the back side off a little bit and also even putting a little bit of a slot in there if the drill bits big enough you can do it pretty easily but uh, yeah that looks like it uh, that came together fairly well so I'm not, not a big proponent of this. I generally do my drill bits by hand like this sort of thing, you know, but I was trained years and years ago by a machinist on how to sharpen drill bits properly to get the, you know, maximum out of them. This is a nice old drill bit made in USA. Yeah, you saw it first right here. <laughs> wow. Pretty good. Okay, so the basic ratings is 1800 to 3750, which is pretty much standard in the industry for electric motors in general. So that's, that's where we're at there. Uh, it is a 110 plug, uh, you know, no, no biggie there. The uh, other specification I should mention is the there's a coarse wheel and a fine wheel. Now the coarse is going to be 36 grit rated, so that's a that's a pretty you know that's going to swallow up some metal pretty fast. This is an 80 grit for the fine side, which again is good. You could change wheels, of course, you know, to whatever size. And being eight inch, of course, it's going to be pretty much standard in the industry that you can go pick up a different set of wheels if if you you know if you need it. Uh, it their uh, link that I'm giving you is uh, at Amazon right now I think it's 14 left in stock or something so these are going out pretty good pretty fast out the door and for the price I checked around the internet because usually I don't like to do that because Vivor for me is just is their tool it's pretty reliable tough tool half the price whatever I found that the closest thing I could find to this one was uh, $20 more than this one here and it wasn't by a brand name that was any good you know it wasn't a good brand name or anything like that so it was like well you know what I would st I guess I would just run with the Vivor plus the fact that from Amazon huh, they're gonna take this 38 pounds worth of equipment drop it at the door I kind of like that idea too I don't have to go shopping or drive a hundred miles to a, a store or someplace to pick something up they just Amazon just bring it out and put it at the front door and say here there you go there's your there's your grinder you know <laughs> uh, now uh, I did. I do have a pedestal kit in here for one of these, and you'd have to drill your own holes. It's not gonna. It will fit the plate, but there's no access holes for the plate for this particular one. And it, you can easily use like three eighths bolts, or even looks like almost uh, half inch bolts to tie this guy down with. I would say three eighths would do the trick to tie it down, but you'd have to drill your own holes. Uh, other features. I don't know, it's quiet, smooth, it's supposed to be very quiet, very smooth, it was designed that way, built that way, 
and it is everything it says it is, which again, I have to thank Beaver for sending something like this over because this is a really nice piece of equipment. And a quick note here at the end, who is this for? Well, you know, a small shop even, like myself, can have something like this in there and it's it's more than usable. It's awesome, <laughs> especially at variable speed. But also if you're a commercial type shop or if you're even industrial at a great price, it's a good grinder. You know, it's just a good bench grinding system. And uh, I'm not gonna say anything more about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, which brings about another question. What do I do with that right OB? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I can, uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll try to figure out a home for it, right? <laughs> Somebody needs that thing, not me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. This is Monday and, uh, yeah, Thursday, a new tool. Oh, yes. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Great bunch out there. Adios and over and out. <laughs>